way to set up a Pro Tools session. Um, this is the way I do it. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying my way is the right way or the wrong way, um, but this is how I think it, uh, it, you know, it works for me and I think it's a great way to do things. So basically, we've got a blank session here. I'm just going to go over a few things how I have mine set up. So for instance, the first thing you're going to notice is I have the transport window up here. Now normally if that's gone, um, you can see here in window, you can go to transport or you can just hit Apple One. I'm running a Mac here so it's Apple One <coughs> on the number pad that is. So that would make that go away and pop back up. Um, you also want to have the MIDI features on here. Um, the, the expanded uh, MIDI controls. I put that on. And make sure MIDI merge is on. Anytime you're working with MIDI, you want MIDI merge on. So when you do one pass, you record your MIDI notes. You do a second pass over that to say you're doing drums, you have kick and snare, now you need to add cymbals. MIDI merge allows you to record the cymbals over that without erasing what you've previously done. Now this is your metronome here. Um, so we've got a, a tempo of 200 BPM and if we click on this conductor guy, it's automatically going to go to 120. What that is going to do is when you have the conductor on, it's going to uh, control your tempo meter here. So if I were to go in here and change the tempo there, it's going to change it. If you have tempo changes in your song, you need that on and you want to do your tempos here. But if you're just doing, say, the song's 200 all the way through, you can just leave it on, on manual tempo mode. Now, over here, we click on this down menu. I always have it on bars and beats. You should always have it on bars and beats. Or you don't always have to, but that's, that's the way I do it. Um, then I have markers, tempo, and meter on. So markers, that's going to be great for going through and you know marking your, the beginning of your song, uh, verse 1, pre-chorus, chorus, breakdown, solo, whatever. Um, marker so your song is organized and you know where to go and to create a marker you can simply hit enter on the number pad I don't have any tracks created there we go um, enter on the number pad and you can type in say chorus and it marks it there and my dog is being weird and snooping around back here um, so if you hear sniffing that's not me um, alright so then the next thing here is when you actually create some tracks, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a stereo master fader. I'm going to create a mono aux input. That's going to be my click track. And then I'm say we're just doing some guitars real quick. We're going to demo out some guitar, uh, some guitar riffs that I've got, and I'm going to build the song. And I'm starting with guitars. So we'll do four audio mono audio tracks. Now we'll name all these, we'll just do uh, Mix Bus, we'll do Click, we'll do Guitar Left, Guitar Right, DI Left, and DI Right. Then Option Click to unhighlight all those. Now I'll always, uh, with my guitars, I always am going to record DIs with them, and I'm going to turn those yellow so I can tell the difference apart, you know, just easily uh, color coordinating things. So. We've got our DIs here, we've got our, our guitars here. Now, my inputs and outputs may be messed up. Uh, depending on what interface you're running, uh, you go up to setup, you go to your IOs, you can set up all your ins, outs, your buses, you know, you can, you can set up everything there. Um, that's going to create, you know, with your inputs and outputs, uh, I don't even think my uh, interface is plugged in at the moment, so uh, it's just running right through the computer uh, Pro, in Pro Tools 10 you can actually do that um, but as you can see here I this was a default of for a guitar setup with my Kemper I've got my Kemper DI I've got a universal audio pre a torpedo um, those were a couple things I had I had set up with my uh, 16 channel interface setup that I have running so you can route you know if I'm recording drums I'm gonna have this set up all differently for my inputs you know for kick snare Tom 1, Tom 2, all the way down, overheads. I'm going to have a lot more here. 
So you can always just hit new path, you can create them. Um, and then same for your outputs if you, if you want to reamp. See, I've got a guitar reamp here. I can put that in, uh, you know, bus it out a channel, whatever the DI track is here. I'll send that out bus or output, you know, bus one, perhaps say. And then I'm going to bring that back in on channel three. So I put my input channel three. That's going to, you know, go through the hardware I have here. And then you just hit record and it's going to, you know, send those DI signals through whatever amp you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, so we've got our tracks created here now. Now, here's a few things you need to know. If you don't have these menus up here or over here, it's simply these little arrows down here to get those. Now, over here, this is going to be your clips or uh, regions if you're using an older version of Pro Tools. That's going to be every audio file that you record. So, I'm going to go ahead and record myself talking. Da, 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 da. Stop we see an audio file comes up here. That just recorded me talking. So we've got that. Um, there's a couple things. You always want to have this AZ button clicked on. And I always have tab to transients on. Tab to transient, what that's going to do is allow you, when you zoom in here, what you can see is you literally hit tab and it's going to get you to those next transients, to those big notes. Um, it comes in handy sometimes with editing. Um, I'm also, I use the three, uh, the three tool here where they're all three highlighted. <coughs> um, you know, you've got your highlight. You've got your non-destructive editing. And then you've got your hand that can move things around. And when you have them all on, it's just a lot quicker for working. You can come in here. Um, Apple E, you can chop something, you can then go ahead and edit it, you can do a, a quick fade, um, you can move stuff around if you need to, you can do all the functions at once, and it just comes in real quick, you know, with um, being able to edit a lot faster instead of having to click them all and going back and forth or using quick keys. Um, I do recommend learn your quick keys, uh, it's very important for saving time and becoming very fast with Pro Tools. There's literally almost a quick key for everything except for deleting a track. That's because you don't want to accidentally be hitting some keys and delete a track. So um, to delete a track, you literally have to highlight it, go to track, and delete. And But basically for almost everything, there's a quick key. Uh, there's a bunch of them that I don't even know yet, but there's literally quick keys for everything. Um, there's also one main thing that I like to do, and that is... Uh, when you go to options under edit window scrolling I find this very annoying so I always have it on no scrolling but um, as you can see here if I put it on say I'm um, let's let's zoom in here say I'm, I'm working on this and it's playing self talking da -da 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 -da. okay so it's gonna continue to scroll with it and there's a couple different variations of that I hate that. I think it's annoying. Uh, it depends on whatever your preference is. I absolutely hate it. I have it on no scrolling at all times. If I need to get somewhere else, I'll go zoom in, zoom out. I'll, I'll go wherever I need to on my own and get there that while the song's still playing. So if it's playing and I see, oh, something's wrong here, and it continues to play on and then goes out the screen, I can still zoom in here and edit, and then I can start <coughs> the playback and make my edit or my fix without it screwing me up and sending me to the next page down the window. So I would recommend having it on no scrolling. That works best for me. Now, there's a couple other things you can do um, real quick that I'll show you. I always run on grid mode. It's important when you're working with the grid. You know, usually quarter note, eight note, sixteenth note is basically what I work with. Um, you know, if I'm editing drums, you'll be in there. You'll need to get in tight with those sixteenth notes. So that ends up looking like this, you know, you, you get all the 16th notes, but we'll just leave it on quarter note for now. Um, groups become very handy when mixing, uh, when editing guitars. If you've got a lot of guitar tracks, especially with the DIs, like in that other video I have um, showing the DI guitar tracks and tightening those up. Uh, normally, if you're doing that, uh, if you're going to reamp, totally fine to just do the DIs. 
But if you like the tone that you're using, say you're doing an album or whatever, you, you've got the guitar tone that you want, but you've also got the DI, just so you can basically see those transients that I'm telling you about, so you can see where those 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 pick notes are, you can see it a lot clearer than if you're using a distorted tone, but you want to have them both. So what you'll end up wanting to do is you'll want to group those both together. So here you can just click on group, new group, and you'll just you know put down guitar, make sure mutes and solos are on, you create a group. When you click it off, the group is not selected. So I hit solo, it's only going to solo the one. I hit solo on that. You click it on, it's going to solo both. Your volumes are going to go with this, they're going to go with each other. And that's important for doing the whole warp view with the the elastic audio that I'm showing you in the other video with tightening the DI transient up to the actual guitar tone. So you're moving them both at the same time to the same marker or to the grid. Um let's see. To add a click track Duh, this is important. Um, okay, so you've got some riffs. Say we're in 200 tempo. You want to create a click track. On this down menu here, I've got my inserts, sends, I.O., and track color, obviously. Those are usually what all, all I need for the most part. So here's my inserts, my sends, and then my in-outs. So this is basically my mix bus, my main outputs left, right. That's my main out. That's what's going to come through my monitors. Everything else is going to come, It's that's basically my master bus, everything's coming out of there, the whole mix. That's when I'll end up putting, uh, you know, compressors, and when, when I start mixing, I'll throw on the SSL G comp on there and mix with that, that's usually what I use, but that's a little more advanced kind of stuff. Um, click track is an insert, this is where you insert plugins, uh, you insert compressors, uh, reverbs, you know, uh, EQs on guitars, vocals, whatever, whatever it is you're using. Um, basically, you're going to go down to instrument, and it's click. You click on that. There's a bunch of different click types here. I've got a preset saved, but you can use whatever click you want. And if you hit command or Apple S on that solo button, that is going to solo your click, so it's always going to play. So if you solo, oh, I got my guitar track here soloed, you're going to, that's soloed the whole time. So it's permanently soloed that way. You don't have to go click solo on that either. So as you can see, now we've got a click track. But say you don't want it at all times, a quick tip here is on the number pad, just hit 7 and it turns this little guy off right here and then it's off. You want it back on, hit 7. Otherwise you can obviously just click it. Um, that's basically for the most part, I don't know if I forgot any any key things that, uh, you know, sometimes I'll get a session and it'll be set up really weird and there'll be weird things going on so I go through and just make sure it's all set back up how I like to run things. Um, but for the most part, that that's pretty much it there. Um, and you know, you can, if, if you end up accidentally like, oh crap, I deleted that and I, I, I can't, I can't undo it. I don't know what I did. You've got your regions over here, your, your clips, and you can always end up just dragging those back. The audio files are always going to be there. Another quick thing is if you're working in a big session and say, uh, you, you know, you start chopping things up like this, you're going to see it. Um, you know, creating all these other files. Now, this is the audio file. These are just the different sections you've chopped. So say I don't need, say, say I've done some edits and let's see, I don't need that one. I don't want that and I don't want that. But I want to keep this what's in here. But I need to clean my session out and get rid of some audio and it's starting to bog me down a little bit. And I've got my session, I've got everything I want, but I don't know what in here I'm not using. You can literally go to clips, you can do select, unused, it's going to highlight it. Then you can just do clear, you can remove that, and then all those files there are gone. Now you're only using those audio files, and it helps clean up your session when you've got a lot of things going. 
uh, it's pretty important to make sure your your session is clean and uh, organized. So hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit. Um, hopefully it wasn't too boring, but that's basically how I get started uh, with creating a session and getting everything up and running and ready to go. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.